الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد محمد ابن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today insha'Allah ta'ala the reflection is on ahmiyyatul waqt fi hayat al-Muslim the importance of time for the Muslim believer but before I start to speak about this topic I want to start by making a authentically transmitted dua Al-Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih min Hadith Abu Hurairah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Allahumma oh Allah Aslih li deeni O Allah perfect my religion for me Alladhi huwa ismatu amri In which infallibility is connected to it Wa aslih li dunyaya And O Allah perfect my worldly affairs Alladhi fiha ma'ashi in it is my life and my living Wa aslih li O Allah perfect for me Akhirati, my hereafter, alati fiha ma'adi, in which I will turn back to and I will go to. Waj'al al hayata. O Allah, make my life for me ziyadat al li fi kulli khair. A place where I increase myself in good. Waj'al al mawta. O Allah, make death for me rahat al li min kulli shah. Make it a comfort for me from all evil. Now you might think to yourself, what does this dua have to do with the topic that we're speaking about, which is the importance of time for a Muslim? And this dua is truly connected to the topic at hand, which is the person who wants Allah to perfect his hereafter affairs or even his worldly affairs is connected to knowing the value of time and how important it is and benefiting from every minute and every opportunity in time for a person. So if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the ability to benefit from your time, you need to memorize and learn this dua. And you need to make this dua and supplicate to Allah to allow you to benefit from your life here. And to be able to come with hard work whilst you live in this world. One of the Aymat al-Salaf, he said, أَدْرَكْتُ قَوْمًا I met a group of people هُمْ أَحْرَصُ عَلَى دِينِهِمْ أَمْ عَلَى أَوْقَاتِهِمْ I met a... One of the Aymat al-Salaf, he said, I met a group of people who were very striving in their time. Then you all عَلَى دَنَانِيرِكُمْ The way you guys strive on your money and your dunya, they were striving more when it came to their time. Have you not seen how people make sure that every single penny when they are trying to close their daily uh, calculation of the income that came through, how much profit did we make? A penny won't drop. Everything will be registered and everything will be written. He said, I met a group of people who were more striving and more hard working towards their time than you when it comes to money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave a lot of importance to time. And if you think about it today, the way that we have become to think, we have been made to believe that time has no value. So we have a saying which is, kill the time. I'm killing time. Is it killing you or are you killing it? Is time killing you? Or are you killing time? It's killing you because the time that goes on is you going, going closer to your grave and your meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave a lot of importance. So inshallah ta'ala, some waqafat, some fawaid inshallah ta'ala. Number one, the textual evidences that show the importance of time is in more than one place in the Quran, Allah swore by time. He either swore by it unrestrictedly 
على إحدى القولين لأهل العلم according to one of the views of the people of knowledge which is that والعصر it means مطلق الزمان it means time unrestricted so Allah swore by time unrestrictedly and there's another view that says والعصر here means the dawn prayer it means the what? it means the not the dawn prayer it means asr time it means the, the asr time and the scholars that say that they say that the asr according to the sharia is that it means salat al asr time so the urf of the quran should be what, what restricts it are we all together we find allah swears in the quran other times for instance he says well fajr allah swears by fajr time allah also swears about well layli allah also swears about one nahari Allah also swears about swears on wadduha. All of these are portion of the time, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He swears by it. Ibn Al Qayyim says, Rahimahullah, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He swore by time, دليل على أهمية الوقت وعظم شأنه. It shows the importance of time and how great it is. لأن الله عز وجل عندما يقسم بهذه الأجزاء because when Allah swears by this portion which is والليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى and when Allah swears about والفجر وليال العشر والقمر إذا تلاها when Allah says والنهار إذا جلاها all of this which are portion of time ابن القيم he says دلالة على عظم المقسم به. It shows the importance of the thing that is being sworn by, which is that time. So something Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave it that importance. It should be very important to us. Point number two, which is the نصوص الدالة على أهمية الوقت. The evidences that show the importance of time. There is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi ghayri ayah in more than one verse in the Quran He considered it from the blessing that He bestowed upon us There's a surah in the Quran which some of the scholars they call it surah to ni'mah Does anyone know what it is? About surah to ni'am If you make it plural Does anyone know what surah it is in the Quran? And if you do know it, put your hand up Not you, Yasin. Surah Al-Ni'am in the Quran. Does anyone know a surah in the Quran that is called Surah Al-Ni'am? Huh? Huh? Hey, Fadl. Surah Al-Nahl. The reason is because in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He states the blessings that He bestowed upon His creation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the blessings that he mentions is Wasakhara Lakumul Layla wa Nahara. Allah has bestowed, he has made tasheer for you, made it easy for you. The day and the night. Washamsa wal qamar, the sun and the moon. All of them are what? They are all musakharatun bi amri. All of them have been made easy in accordance to your need. So the reason why Allah is saying I have made the night and the day Musakhar means At night you benefit by sleeping And at day you wake up and you benefit from that time And then Allah is saying these are the blessings I have given you وَلِذَلِكَ Many people don't realize the value of time And so the scholars they said that those who don't value time are not Ulul Albab Wherever the Quran addresses the Ulul Albab it is addressing the people who realize the value of time. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّبَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّبَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ So before Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا Those who remember Allah standing up. 
and those who remember Allah sitting down, and those who remember Allah lying down. Before that, what did he say? Inna fi dalika. All of that is a ayat al-ulil al-albab. Amma wa khtilaf al-layl wa nari al-ayat al-ulil al-albab. Who are they? Al-ladhina, the ones. Which ones? The ulil al-albab, the smart ones. Are the one who benefited from the what? Al-layl wa al-nahar wa al-shams wa al-qamar. They benefited from the day, they benefited from the night. ولذلك the poet he said والوقت أنفس ما عنيت بحفظه وأراه أسهل ما عليك يضيع Time is the most important and the most valuable thing and I see it is the most easiest of things that we let go of Jamaluddin Al-Qasimi the great scholar Jamaluddin Al-Qasimi he's from the great scholars of Damascus he saw a group of people playing on the middle of the road. He saw them playing. Or they were playing chess and games. And he said, Lokal al waqtu, if time was ma yuba' that which is sold and brought, then I would have bought it from these people. If time could be bought from people, I would have said, I'll give you money, give me your time. And I would have bought it from them. Because he saw a people who what? Who are benefiting who are not benefiting from their time and for him he's struggling to benefit benefit from the 24 hours it's finishing from him quickly walidhalika allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the quran in surah al-furqan he says he says wa huwa alladhi ja'ala al-layla wa nahara allah had made the the night and he made the day خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَدَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُرًا What does the word خِلْفَة mean? خِلْفَة means the night comes then the day comes after it. One comes after the other. Allah, he made the day and the night like that towards each other. Then look what he said. لِمَنْ أَرَادَ The reason why Allah made the day come and then the night come after it. لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَدَّكَّرَ the one who wants to remember Allah or arada shukura or who wants to come with gratitude, then this is an opportunity for them to benefit from. The day and the, and the night. Liman arada and yet The one who wants to remember Allah or arada shukura or he wants to come with gratitude. Also, from the ayats that indicate the importance of time is. That which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in some verses of a group of people who did not benefit from their time and they destroyed their time and that when they come the day of judgment they're going to ask Allah if they can be if they can be brought back to the dunya so they can benefit from their time. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu la tulhikum. Those of you who believe, do not let your children destroy you. And your wealth, amwalukum, amwalukum, do not let your wealth, ya ayu alladina amanu la tulhikum, amwalukum, wala awladukum, and dikrillah. Do not let your wealth and your children destroy you and divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wamay yaf al dalika fa ulaika humul khasirun. And anyone who allows his children and his wealth to divert him from the remembrance of Allah, then he's verily from the lost. Then look what Allah says. وَأَنْفِقُوا give مِنْ مَا أي مِنْ بَعْضِ مَا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ From some of the things Allah has given you, give it out in charity and in fact مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمْ Before it comes a day to you One of you فَيَقُولَ Then that individual says رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَانِ You'll regret it, right? What would he say? فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ مَعِ لُودِ لَوْ لَا أَخَرْتَنِي If only you delay and you allow me to benefit from my time a bit more. So what am I going to be? فَأَصَدَّقَ I can give charity وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And I can be from those who are righteous. Ibn Qayyim said فَأَصَدَّقَ here is used for these people because that was what they were lacking. But if the person wasn't praying he would say فَأُصَلِّيَ So I can pray. And the one who was lacking zakat, uh, hajj, he would say hajj. Every person, whatever they were not doing, is what they're going to wish that they could do.
So if time was not a valuable thing, these people would not have asked for it. The poet he said, "Umathilu the lubbi fi lubbi hi masaiba kabla and kabla and tanzila, fa in nazalat baghta talam taru'hu li ma kana fi nafsihi mathala, wa dul jahli ya man ayyamahu, wa yansa masari' man qad hakala, fa in dahibat husuruf al zaman bi baghd masaibi hi aula." The salaf what they used to do is they used to bury a hole inside their houses, and they would lay in there. And they sleep in there and they would say, يُمَثِّلُ ذُ اللُّبِّ فِي اللُّبِّ مَصَائِبَ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْزِلَ He would make himself visualize and live the reality of the day that's going to come to him. فَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بَغْتَةً If that day comes to him suddenly, لَمْ تَرُعْهُ It doesn't scare him. لِمَا كَانَ فِي نَفْسِهِ مَثَلًا Because he used to what? He compared this to himself before. He's lived that reality before. وَذُو الْجَهْلِ يَامًا أَيَّامَهُ But the person who lived with ignorance and heedlessness and wasn't aware of this time, wasn't, when it comes to him, it's going to be a shock. صح? So they would lay down in the grave, pretending to be the, their moment, and they would say, قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتَ صح? He would say that. And then he would take the dust of his clothing and his body parts, and he would get up, and then he would say to himself, you have been given the opportunity again. Ya Abdullah benefit from it. So he would get up and he would work hard. وَلِذَلِكَ حَسَنُ الْبَصْرِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He saw a man in Janaza. And he said to him, the man who was standing with him, لَوْ كُنْتَ If you were مَكَانَ هَذَا الرَّجُلِ If you were in the place of the man who is in this grave right now, what would you have hoped for? What would have it? ماذا تتمنى? What do you wish for? And then he said, أتمنى I would wish that Allah brings me back to the dunya so I can do righteous deeds. And then he said to him, when he grabbed him by the hand, he said to him, Allah has now given you that opportunity and he has allowed you to benefit from that time, the benefit from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, this ayah, he says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who are disbelievers, who disbelieve in Allah, لَهُمْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمُ For them, is the punishment of the hellfire. They're going to be punished. Punished, punished in it. لَا يُقْضَى عَلَيْهِمْ فَيَمُوتُوا Death is not going to come to them, so they die in the... That's what they want. They would wish to die, but they're not going to die. وَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِهَا And the punishment of the hellfire will not be reduced for them. كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي And like that, we reward كُلَّ كَفُورٍ Every disbeliever. The kuffar, that's how Allah deals with them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to keep them in the hellfire. لَا يُقْضَى فَيَمُوتُوا They're not going to die, because that's what they want. وَلَا يُخَفَّفُوا مِنْ عَذَابِهَا And the hellfire will not be reduced for them. They will be in that consistent adab forever. Look what Allah then says. وَهُمْ يَسْطَرِخُونَ فِيهَا and they are wailing and screaming and asking and begging for help. Look what they say. رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا O oh Allah, take us out of this hellfire. نَعْمَلْ So we can come with and we can bring صالح and righteous deeds. Look what Allah. غَيْرَ الَّذِي كُنَّا نَعْمَلْ The righteous deeds that we never did, that we missed out on. O oh Allah, give us the opportunity to do, to, to do it. And then look what Allah says to them. أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ didn't we give you the opportunity to live and did we not give you time? Umur, a portion of time. Awalam no ammirkum. Did we not give you a portion of the of time? Ma yatadakkaru fihi man tadakkar. In which you can come to your senses and you can realize the reality around you. Waja'akum al nadir. And the reminder came to you. And Ibn Abbas and others they said that nadir was what? The shape that enters the person's bed, the white hair. It came into your bed, signs were given to you. Why is it that you didn't benefit from the reminder that was given to you? Fadooku taste the punishment. For verily the oppressors and the transgressors, they have no one to give them victory. Now, brothers, pay attention. These people are in the hellfire. They are burning in the hellfire. They want to get out. So what is it that they ask? They ask Allah to take them back to what? 
the dunya. When they ask Allah if He can take them back to the dunya, what is it that they want to do? Is it business that they want to do? Is it quatch with their friends? Is that what they want to do? La. The thing that they want to do is to come back to this world and do righteous deeds. But then look at the response Allah Rabbul Ardi wa Saba says to them. أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرَ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Allah says to them, Have I not given you the opportunity to live for that time? You lived for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and however long you lived for. Didn't I give you that time to live? Also, many people died around you. Look at your friend so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. He died. You took him to his janazah. So many people. All of these were signs for you. That your time is coming. Then it said to you, Taste the punishment of the hellfire. The oppressors and the wrongdoers, they, have, they don't have no one giving them victory. So this shows us the importance of time. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also the, sorry, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith of Imam al Bukhari, who narrated in the Sahih, Ni'matani, two blessings. Two blessings the people are very heedless about and they don't know its value. The first one is to health and wal faragu the free time that you have. When you're a youth and you're a young person, you have those two blessings. Shaykh Abdul Razak, the Abdul Muhsin, Al Abad Al Badr, he mentions a story. He mentions a story. He said, I knew a man that had one leg missing. He had what? One leg missing. And he said in the Kaaba many years ago, the Taraweeh and the Tahajjud when it was prayed, they used to make sure that the Tahajjud, the last 10 day nights of Ramadan, they used to pray with three ajza. They used to pray with what? Three other ajza. In, in, in other words, they used to finish the whole Quran in the last ten days. It reduced us. They started to make it easier. So, he said, I saw him, Shah Abdul Rizak said, a man with one leg standing for all of the three ajza, three juz, for the tahajjud. He only had one leg. Sheikh said he would pray in front of me. He has a God his whole body. He said, and also mentioned another story of a shabba, a youth who was 20 years of age. And what happened to him? He burnt. His whole skin and everything went. And his tongue and everything. And the sheikh mentioned that they took him to hospital. He just became a piece of meat somewhere. But he loved to read the Quran. So, the Sheikh said, I asked him, what is this Quran in front of you? What are you doing with it? He said, Sheikh, I read it. He said, how do you get the Quran? How do you turn it over? And he says, he calls, he screams out for the nurses to come, the doctor to come, and to turn the page over for him. So he reads the Quran in his bed. He's a person whose body is like that. Ma'adalika is benefiting from it. So who is the disabled one here? The disabled one is the one who is unable to read the book of Allah even though he has the body parts that he has. The one who doesn't benefit from his time, the one who doesn't, who doesn't remember Allah, that's the disabled one. Not the one who's what? Who's got body parts missing from him. And that's the statement that the Shaykh Hafizahullah mentions. I want you to all, inshallah ta'ala, listen to this final point that I'm going to mention. And that is a very powerful advice given by Fudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah ta'ala. Fudayl ibn Iyad had a very good discussion between himself and a man who reached the age of 60. And many of you have already heard this story before, but we will conclude by taking benefit from it. This man at the age of 60, he met Fudayl ibn Riyadh and a very beautiful discussion took place between the two of them. Fudayl ibn Riyadh said to him, 
Kam anta alayka? How many years? How old are you? He asked him, Dani kam umruk? How old are you? He said, Situna sana. I'm 60 years of age. Fudayl ibn Iyad then said to him, Fa'anta mundu sitina sana. You for 60 years, Tasiru ila rabbika, you've been moving towards your Lord. Yushiku and Tablu. You're very close, you're going to reach your Lord soon. Then the man said to Fudayl ibn Iyad, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Fudayl ibn Iyad then said to him, do you know what the meaning of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un? Do you know what it means? Do you know its meaning? And this is a powerful point that Fulay Mu'yad is saying, which is many of us say things that we don't understand. You see a lot of people today, they will say subhanallah. What does subhanallah mean? They'll say Allahu Akbar. What does Allahu Akbar mean? They'll say la ilaha illallah. What does la ilaha illallah mean? It's very important that the person learns the meaning of these words. So the man said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Fudayl said to him, Ata'rifu, do you know the, the tafsir of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un? Meaning, do you know the sharh of it? And the man then said to him, Inna lillahi means that Ana lillahi mamluk. I am owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ana makhluq lillahi, I'm a creation for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ana mudabbar, that I am one who is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what inna lillahi means. Wa inna ilayhi raji'una means, to him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I will turn back to, meaning to him I will go back to. As Allah said in the Quran, وَأَنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَهَىٰ And to your Lord is your final turning. That the person will go, إِنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الرُّجْعَىٰ The person will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the man, Fulayl said to him, after he responded, Fulayl said to him, after he explained to him what إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ means Fulayl said to him مَنْ عَلِمَ Anyone who comes to know أَنَّهُ مَسْؤُولٌ Anyone who knows that he's going to go back to his Lord and he's going to be questioned فَلْيُعِدَّ لِلْسُؤَالِ جَوَابًا Then let him ask himself a question for the answer that awaits him. If Allah is going to question you the day of judgment and questions are going to be asked, then prepare the answer for those questions. Ask yourself these questions in advance and have the answers prepared. And the beauty about the Day of Judgment, brothers, is we all know the questions and we all know the answers. And then some people are still going to fail. And it's dim-wittedness that you have questions, a set of questions, and you've already been given the answer in advance. And then you fail that test. How, what would you think of a person who's given a question a test, a question, and they'll tell the answer. And they'll say, this is the answer for the test tomorrow. And then he comes and he fails. And he ends up going to the hellfire. This shows that this person is dim-witted. Then the man, he became very scared. He said, فَمَنْ خِيلَ What is the way out? Oh, for thine. How is the, what's the solution for this issue? And Fulayl ibn Iyad said to him, al to yasirah. The solution out of this problem is very easy. Meaning sahla. He said to him, tuhsinu fi ma baqi. You just have to perfect what is ahead of you. That you need to perfect. Yaghfiru laka, Allah will forgive for you ma mada, that which has passed. That which has passed, Allah will forgive for you. Those 60 years what you've done, if they were sins, ask for forgiveness, but make sure you perfect what awaits you. I mean, what's in front of you? Perfect your situation. And this, what life shows us, how Allah is very merciful. 
a person 80 years of sins and crimes the last day if he repents to Allah the one who has done sins if he repents Allah will accept his repentance and Islam will Islam will eradicate and it will get rid of everything that has happened before it and the tawbah tajubu ma qablaha and the tawbah it gets rid of everything that is before it so if a person sins and he repents the repentance will it will take away everything that's why Allah said in the Quran قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّرُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says here, My slaves who have transgressed and exceeded their limits, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله, do not give up on Allah's mercy. Verily, Allah forgives every sin that a person does. If they repent from it, Allah is very kind and generous and forgiving and merciful towards His creation. Two things that a person, if they do, they can benefit from their time. Number one, seek help from Allah and turn back to Him. And by saying, Allahumma ilaka aslamtu, O oh Allah, to you I surrender. Wa bika amantu, to you I believe in. Wa alayka tawakkaltu, on you alone, O oh Allah, I rely. Wa ilayka anabtu, and to you, O oh Allah, I turn back to. Wa bika khasamtu, and through you, O oh Allah, I argue. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi izzatika. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in your honor. La ilaha illa anta. There is none worthy of worship except you. That person makes that dua. The second thing that the person does is that they repent from their previous sins. Sins are what make you heavy not to benefit from your time. Sometimes you wake up and you can't leave your bed. What's kept you in your bed and has taken away from you the strength to get out of your bed is the disobedience of Allah. And sins, they take away from you the ability to benefit from your time. That's why Allah says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَصُوحًا Those of you who believe, repent to Allah, a perfected, correct repentance. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ إِشْ تُفْلِحُونَ So falah is to benefit from your time enters there, does it not? وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Repent to Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ To receive falah, success in your day, prosperity. It comes with what? To repent to Him. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan. And Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfirullah tu'ilayhi.